Well, good morning. In the office this morning, getting ready to do the money video thing. It's going to be a waste of time this week, I think, but we'll do it. Ah, oh, it's just been a, a weird week. Should have stayed in bed, but it is what it is. However, I was able to get some uh, videos, little clips. I'm going to string them all together here to answer uh, some of the questions I've been asked. Um, so the first set of clips you'll see, I actually shot an intro to this while I was out there, but the sun was coming through the window and it really just messed up the whole video. So the first one's going to be setting up your deck for coils. When I did the coil video, I didn't really get up on the deck and show you exactly how I put the mats and the boards and where I put them. I kind of described it when I was walking along the side, kind of hard to see. So we're going to go over that. And I, uh, I know I talk about in that video, a couple things I see guys not doing a lot. They don't use the rubber mats. Is it required? No. Is it safer? Much. And uh, Pro tip, it's in there. Using the mats also um, take a lot of that vibration and bounce um, you'll feel in your seat driving. So to me, it's worth it. And it's got a good safety aspect to it. In the video, I show where I set them up, <clears throat> where I set them up before I pull in to get coils. You never know, so most of the time, you never know what size coils you're going to get. So in this video, they're real close together, and I always do that. And once I start setting the coils, you can adjust them backwards or forwards. And uh, usually the crane man will help you both get on one side of the, he get on each side of the trailer, and they grab the boards, pull them forward, pull them back. If you see my center rack, it's almost right, it's pretty much right over the center line of the trailer. But these coils were skinny and fat, so they took up a, you know, a lot of room this way and tall, but this way. So you had to spread the racks out, you know, so they don't hit on each other. They can touch a little, but, you know, they have to get down in the rack. So actually, that center rack, by the time we're all said and done, if you notice when I get outside, will be behind the center line. And that's where I want it. I mean, you, this kind of stuff you have to learn as you go. But basically, you... When you're not on a scale, you want, if you're going to air on something, air to the back of a spread axle. So you don't want to go forward because it's easy to get too much weight on your drives. Uh, and I'll put it in the video. I said 15,000 pounds. Actually, those big coils were like 17 and 19 or something like that. They're pretty heavy. The whole total load was 47, 200 pounds. So... I'd rather shift more weight to the back of a spread because you can put 40 back there, 20 and 20. Uh, you're not really going to overload that center, front axle unless you really get it right on it. So nonetheless, in the video, you'll see that it slid to the back. It all scaled out fine, perfectly good. And then after those clips, we will go right into I a lot of questions. And I, uh, there's an intro to this and everything, but since I'm shooting this, I might as well mention it. We'll, scroll, we'll roll right into... Uh, the headboard. I'm gonna put these all in one video because one the the coils is probably long enough for a video, but the headboard's only like three minutes. So we'll just put them all in one, uh, cover two subjects uh, with one video. I've just had a lot of questions about the headboards you see on CRST trailers and uh, what's the deal with them? Can you hang chains? Can you put this? Can you put that? And uh, I just did a couple videos on that because. Uh, that seems to be a question, so there you go. Uh, all right, well, the kid put those together, and we'll see you in a little bit, and I'm going to do the money video, too. All right, see you, bye. All right, we're out here, and we'll prime over here, loading them up. So, I got my three coil racks. The one thing I see guys not doing is they just don't want to get out these traction mats because it's too much work, I guess, but... Not only is it safer, here's a pro tip for you. The coils will ride better. It gives them a cushion. Put them down on that deck, metal to metal. You'll feel it in your butt for however many miles. So we're gonna haul three. This one is a hair back off my center line. That's how I do the big coils. And uh, I got one in the front and one in the back. So. Two coil racks you know, is all you need for these because all, all three of these are under 20,000. Uh, you need one coil rack for every 10,000 pounds of weight. So if you got a 45,000 pound coil, you need five because four is not enough legally. So 
I don't know what size I'm getting. Like that, I'll probably stack them like that. Big one in the middle, second biggest one on the back, and a little one on the front. Uh, but I don't know what I get until I get in there. So, like I said, don't be the guy that pulls in not ready to go. I got my chains out, can't see them, but oh, there they are. The binders are hanging on the side. Got my edge protectors, got my under tarping. I haven't undone my tarp yet, I don't need to do that until I get out of ready to go. Alright. Down here, I think I mentioned precision strip. They're kind of slow. Just waiting my turn. Alright y'all. Bye now. We'll make another couple, three or four videos and stream all together. See ya bye. Well, hopefully it don't pick up that music and flag me, but uh, for those of you who never done it, it's in the life of a fly better. Bunch of chaining and strapping going on. Waiting on the coal, the crane man, to bring me my goodies. Got my old man ladder ready to rock. Say goodbye. One on and we wait. Got that one loaded and secured. I got two about that size and a little one. I'm gonna do one in the front, one in the back, and the baby in the middle. Alright, so you bye. Alright, load and chain. Let's get out of here and get this hard hat and all this junk off of the tarp out there. It's getting kind of dark. Right, we'll see what we can do. Alright. Alright, we'll see how well this comes out. I got my under padding on there. I got the straps going over to hold the under padding. And you get securement credit for that, of course. I got two chains each on these big ones that weigh 15,000 pounds and a strap. One chain on this little dude, he's 9,000, chains plenty, but it's got a strap. And two chains on this other one. So, there you go. The straps will help the tarp hold the sides of the tarp out so it don't flap. That's the main reason I did that and to hold the under padding. There's really no way to make this pretty, but I'm gonna give it my best go at it. Oh, at least it's uh, nice out here tonight. All right, I'm gonna get tarping. See ya, bye. It ain't the prettiest, but it's gonna fly. go. As always, no bungees outside the rub rail. Oh, what is that? I gotta fix that. One kind of poked out there. We can't have it. I'll be pulling up there. Go get my paperwork. Take the old baby wipe shower. If you ain't never had one of those. You ain't been trucking very long. Lay down for a few hours. It's my tens up. Off we go. I may or may not have started my 10 hour break like three hours ago. Allegedly, but maybe not. Because I would never cheat, you know. So, but I guess you could if you wanted. Alright. <laughs> Alright, y'all. God bless you. Bye now. All right, late well, good morning. Late morning. Uh, thought I'd do a video. I get a lot of questions on the headboard of this trailer, you know. Can you put stuff in it? I don't know, just a variety of questions. It's a, you know, CRST, if you uh, come over here, you're going to rent one of their trailers like I am at the moment. Uh, it'll have a headboard on it. I've come to actually like it. I mean, when I buy my own trailer, I probably won't go this route because um, if I had another box and a couple dunnage racks, I wouldn't need the headboard. Uh, it doesn't really hinder me in any way, um, but it does catch a little wind, I think. And uh, yeah, sometimes when you have stuff that's exactly 48 feet, it's 
it's a pain because it takes up a few inches of it plus the tarps uh so i think i could eliminate i well i know because i run trailers that didn't have headboards and at the end of the day i'd probably rather go this route but this ain't a bad deal i'm sure it's because it's a cheaper way to go um than adding dunnage racks and another toolbox and uh you know there's a, there's a safety element to it so but uh we're gonna get out here and uh check it out flip this around as you can see i got plenty of time yep big long line of trucks um uh, here at the new core yard for beams hauling some beams to ohio uh, new core out of Blyville. And these guys are fast. The problem is these uh, these rookie flatbedders, man, they do two things. They won't set their deck up, which I'm about to get out and do, so you're ready to be loaded. And then uh, they want you to throw two chains and get on out of here and go across the road there. They got a chain up lot yard and a tarping station if you no beams really get tarped out of here. I guess they have some finished beams over on the other side, so... But if people would just set their deck up and throw a couple chains and get on out of the way, this line would just go quick, because these guys, they load trailers fast once you're actually in there. I think I've done videos on that, but... Since I'm about to get out and get my chains and boards and everything ready... Ooh, what an idea! Uh, I'll make a video of this headboard. Kill two birds with one stone. All right, y'all. See you in a minute. All right, so here's the headboard. I'll put a picture of this for the intro, I guess. But you got your chains in here. Your uh, binders. It's got a couple locks on it. All right. Over here, I got most of my uh, coil timbers, racks, and pads. On this side, I keep five coil racks, a couple timbers, and just enough pads to do one coil, which is what I do most of the time. As you can see with these wood slats, you can get stuff down in there. Edge protectors, racks, things of that nature. All right. Pretty simple, I don't know what else you guys want to see. Those bungee cords, six of them, I keep those up here. Those are just for what I'm doing now, actually, or coils, but it's just for the binders, the excess chain to wrap it around the binders. So they just stay up here. Of course, I have a couple hundred more on the side box, but uh, yeah. All right, let me get my deck set up. See you, bye.